Hello, everyone. This is the mind of Lilith, and thank you for joining me today as I take a deeper look at the most recent episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville, season eight, episode one. I would not do a full episode recap as there are plenty of other content creators who do an excellent job covering the show. Instead, I will be focusing on specific segments of the episode that I believe could be used as teachable moments for myself and the audience. So as some of you guys may know, I decided to stop reviewing the show over the last season and a half because some of the fans were doing too much. And while I'm good at arguing and I love a good debate, I realized that some people weren't arguing about the facts. They were arguing about their feelings. And I also felt like some people were weaponizing the information that I was presenting to relentlessly bully members of the cast, and that was never the intention for my platform. My OG subscribers remember how difficult it was for me to review this show initially because I felt like I was unintentionally adding to the drama for a multitude of reasons. And you know, honestly, God on my conscience was warning me to stay on message and not get too mired in the weeds of the fake gossip and character assassination. So I pulled back intentionally and I'll get into that some more when I discuss the Prince Stella Clark situation. So over the last six to 12 months, my brain has been reformatted like a hard drive. I've been doing a lot of reading, writing, working, and studying, and I've disconnected from the show as well as other aspects of my life mentally and emotionally. As a matter of fact, I forgot a whole new season was coming up until one of my subscribers reminded me a few days ago. I didn't even watch the season's preview, but I decided to watch episode one and the energy was refreshing, to be honest. I think the cast needed a break. Um, the last season was over 26 episodes, and I don't know why it was that long. Anyway, the episode starts with Martel's arrest last year because of harassing communication, aka Martel's revenge porn plot. Martel was conspiring to make Melody look like a whore using the sex tape they made when they were married. As if he hasn't done enough already. Um, this man is so mentally disturbed that he really doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. What I will say is that I do believe that Martel released the montage of Melody abusing him, quote unquote, over the past couple months. Was it January? Because Melody accused Martel of domestic violence while she's admitted to physically attacking him on several occasions due to his relentless verbal, emotional and mental abuse. Unfortunately, Martel is the type of mentally ill that will have you lose your mind without putting his hands on you. This is textbook narcissism. So over the past couple of years, I stated that Melody was suffering from PTSD because of Martel's narcissism. And someone in the audience told me that Dr. Francis didn't think Martel was a narcissist, which I would 100% take with a grain of salt because Martel is Dr. Francis's patient. He's not supposed to disclose any of his client's diagnoses. But I remember the incredulous look that Dr. Francis had on his face when Martel told him that Arion was a peasant. This was in season one, okay? Martel was smirking when he told Dr. Francis that Arion was a peasant. He said this on national TV and Dr. Francis was like, whoa, you really said that? So anyone who will call someone that he's ruining his marriage for a peasant is mentally disturbed. And at that point, I knew that Martel was messing with Arion, not just for the sex and attention, but to hurt Melody and put her in her place. So in the first scene, Martel's talking to his mother, Miss Marlene, about the situation. And I honestly wish that she would stop giving Martel advice, even though that's his mother and she has more of a right to speak about the situation than I do, to be honest. Um, she gives really bad advice. Yes, Martel's mother wants to give him unconditional love and encouragement. But when you really love your child, you need to teach them that there are consequences for their actions, good or bad. At one point, Martel said Melody was doing this because she wanted full custody of the kids and she needed to make him look like an unfit parent, lying to her again. Then he said that the kids need their father more than they need their mother. At that point, I don't think Martel was talking about Melody. I think Martel was talking about himself and his mother, who raised her irresponsible and reckless sons alone while his father was doing 25 years in jail. Because if Martel really believed the kids need their father more than their mother. Instead of cheating for the last five years of his marriage, he would have spent his free time 
trying to be a better parent, learning how to cook, learning how to do the girl's hair, learning how to manage the household the way he thought Melody should be doing. If Melody was slacking off because she was working so hard to run their family businesses, which is honestly more than two full-time jobs, then Martel should have used the free time that he had to pick up the slack because his kids needed him more than they needed their mother at that point. Did Martel's children need him to allow his mistress to disrespect their mother? Did Martel's children need him to take $17,000 or steal $17,000 from their mother to have them sleeping on air mattresses in their new home? Did Martel's children need him to have a side baby right after destroying the nuclear family? Did Martel's children need him to call Melody to buy food for them while they were in Martel's custody? Did they need Martel more than they needed Melody when he failed his business license exams, which was needed for the construction contracts that were feeding their family? Did the kids need Martel when he was taking helicopter flights with Arion? Did they need Martel when he was giving thousands of dollars of their money to his mistress? Yes, at some point in their lives, children need their fathers more than their mothers, at some point, but they never needed a father like Martel more than their mother. Martel is projecting again. Martel realizes now that he needed his father more than he needed his mother, Marlene, at some point in his life. And he wasn't there for him. And so now he's projecting that onto his children and Melody. Martel would 100% try to turn his children against their mother, just like he did when he had them in the car, reciting the script about how much fun they have with him. Tank already resents his father, just like Martel resents his father. But unfortunately, Martel is too uh, demented and egotistical to see that he's ruining all of the relationships with the people he claims to love because he does not love himself. That's basically what all this boils down to. Narcissists use everyone as pawns. Everyone, okay? Mother, children, wife, friends. They use everyone as pawns to absolve themselves of any responsibility for how they conduct themselves in life. Like the IDF in Gaza, Martel uses his children as human shields to make him look like a good father while relentlessly attacking Melody from behind them. So every time Melody wants to stop Martel from hurting her and their children, she has to go through their children to get to him. Everybody knows that Melody has been more than fair to Martel uh, since this divorce. She did not ask for full custody. She gave him joint custody. She didn't ask for alimony or child support, and he still stole money from her. But Martel still needed more than a pound of flesh from Melody, as if suffering the indignity of having to compete with a disrespectful gutter snipe for your own husband was not enough. One of the reasons Martel cheated on Melody for so long, and he was so bold with the cheating, was because he knew Melody loved her children and their family so much that she was willing to endure the torment and the disrespect because she did not want to break up the family hurting the children. He was banking on Melody being a good mother to have his cake and eat it too with Arion. Martel, children benefit when they have good fathers in their lives, not men who are determined to destroy their mother. Did you ever consider how you were making your children feel when you were torturing their mother? Or do you blame Melody for suffering too loudly? Was Melody supposed to suffer in silence to protect you so that the children won't know that you were cheating on her and had a side baby? Melody's supposed to protect Martel, Martel's kids are supposed to protect him, but Martel couldn't even protect his family from his mental illness and his selfishness. And if I said it once, I'll say it again. One of the reasons Martel is furious with Melody is because she exposed his fake persona. He was using her, their businesses, and their children to look like something he was not. He was more interested in being the Wizard of Oz than being a regular human being, a good father, a good husband, and a good business partner. When Martel talks to people about what's going on with him and Melody, whether it's his friends or um, his mother, Martel, he likes to gloss over the extent of the harassment and abuse towards Melody to make himself look innocent. Um, he wants to make it seem as if Melody's getting robbed for no reason. She's not logical. She's irrational. She has anger issues. And at one point, Miss Marlene was like, Martel doesn't have to keep taking this from Melody. I don't know what this is. Was this the side baby? Was this the porn revenge plot? Was this the $17,000 being stolen from Melody? What this is Miss Marlene referring to when she says Martel doesn't have to take this anymore. He doesn't have to keep taking this from Melody. He may have to strike back at one point. As if Martel hasn't been relentlessly carpet bombing Melody with his narcissism since the beginning of their relationship. I can't even blame Miss Marlene 100% because she may not know how evil her son is. And like many Southern Christian black women, 
who are male identified. Miss Marlene prefers to put her head in the sand and play boo-boo the fool as her sons terrorize the community. We have so many mothers who coddle their sons while they're destroying the community. Homicides, drug dealings, rapes, all this other stuff. These women refuse to hold these men accountable. And side note, Miss Nell was talking about the situation with Martel with Stormy. And she says something like um, she didn't like the fact that Martel um, had the cops call on him and he went to prison. And she was basically alluding to the historical issues that Black men have had with law enforcement, being harassed, beaten, and killed, and unjustly accused of crimes. And there is some merit to what she is saying, if Martel was normal. But Martel is not normal. Martel has severe mental health issues that need to be checked. Miss Nell's comments reminded me of a documentary that I saw a couple years ago called On the Record. And in that documentary, Drew Dixon was accusing Russell Simmons of sexually assaulting her while she worked at Def Jam. And she said that, like many Black women, she didn't want to go to the police about her assault because she was trying to protect Russell Simmons. And she mentioned the fact that many Black women have been conditioned and trained to protect Black men, even at their own expense. So I'm going to protect the person that's trying to kill me. I won't call the cops on this man because I don't want the cops to show up at my door and shoot him down, even as he's threatening to take my life. That is the mentality that Miss Nell has. And again, there is some historical merit to it. However, since Jim Crow um, ended legally several decades ago, Black men have been cannibalizing the community. They have been allowed to run amok in our communities, destroying it. I spoke to an NYPD detective um, a few months ago, and he told me that he has watched countless videos. He was in the police force for about 20 years. He said he's watched countless videos of Black women being sexually assaulted in the elevators of these tenement buildings, the projects. He's seen them being sexually assaulted, and they don't report it to the police. The man just gets to rape them and go about his day. And the woman, they freeze up and then they let it happen and then they go about their business. He says he's seen countless instances of this happening and women are not reporting their sexual assault. And I asked him, well, can't you guys do something about it? He said, no, we cannot go after the assailant unless the woman press charge, presses charges. And a lot of women don't want to do it because it's a complicated process. It's humiliating. They're going to have to reenact the events and relive it again. So many of them just go about their day as if nothing has happened. So to be honest, to be honest, to be honest, there are serial killers and serial rapists in the Black community who are being protected by mothers, girlfriends, cousins, and sisters. The women are protecting the deviants in the community, and now the community is being destroyed by the very men who we're trying to protect. These men aren't saying, you know what, we got to do better. We know that if we attack a woman, for the most part, she won't go to the police. So it's our responsibility to make the community safer so that these innocent women don't feel obligated to protect criminals. But no, these men who have been coddled by their mothers are going to continue to cannibalize the community because they're going to continue to blame other people for the things that they do. Just like Martel blames Melody for ruining his reputation after he got his side mistress pregnant and allowed her to go on social media to talk down on his wife. He blames her for that. So these men don't take responsibility for anything. The law has to get involved, unfortunately, in some cases to force these men to act right. Unfortunately, in many cases, you know, the police have replaced the role of the black father in the community. Since a lot of these black men can't discipline themselves, the police have to discipline them. That's just what it is. I don't agree with it 100 percent. There are some cases where the cops are doing too much and it's not all black men. All black men are not cannibalizing the community. I know I'm going to read some comments saying all black men aren't bad. Nobody's saying all black men are bad. But a significant percentage of black men who have committed rapes, and murders, they're not in prison. They're not. So Miss Nell, you know, I, I don't think she has bad intentions. I think I know where her heart is when she makes that statement because that's something that we have been socialized into doing, protecting Black men at the expense of ourselves. And there's some women who abuse the system and they lie on these men. They falsely accuse them of doing certain things and they're, you know, they're not telling the truth. That happens often. But based on my conversations with the NYPD, some detectives and police officers, a lot of them are like, these dudes are out here running through women, sexually assaulting them. And the crimes aren't being reported. They're being underreported, actually. In theory, you know, protecting black men sounds good, but you can't protect somebody who's trying to destroy you at the same time. That's self-destructive. And this is one of the reasons why men like Martel expect women to destroy themselves to protect him. 
So back to Miss Marlena Martel. I can't even blame Miss Marlena 100% because she may not know how evil her son is. Um, Martel likes to gloss over the facts and she likes to put her head in the sand, right? Martel keeps projecting his actions onto Melody, calling her wicked and evil because she's fighting back. Martel expects Melody to roll over and take his abuse because he wants her to protect his image so that when she decides to put her foot down, he can make it seem as if she's being unfair to him. And this is one of the reasons why so many women didn't like Melody in the beginning. They fell for the fake image that Martel was presenting. And to be honest, Melody wants to protect Martel's image too for their brand, but that backfired. Martel wanted to use their power couple brand to manipulate Melody into staying with him and not calling him out publicly. Melody knew that if she stayed with Martel, it would embolden him to be disrespectful of her even more so because Martel was using the brand, the image that they had cultivated to bait women, to attract women. Arion was in love with the image of Martel being a good family man, and that image was created by him and his wife. That was in reality. So Melody knew that as long as she stayed married to Martel, he would continue to use that image to keep on cheating, to justify cheating. I'm a good man. I'm a good father. I'm a good husband. So I deserve to cheat. <laughs> the image that she and Martel had created as a married couple, it justified his actions. He was using that to justify his actions. He was like, I'm a good father, a good husband, this and that, <laughs> right? I'm the primary breadwinner, whatever the case may be. And he used the fake image that this marriage had cultivated to manipulate Arion into believing that Melody deserved to be cheated on. If you were treating your husband right, then I wouldn't be here, right? He's attractive, he's a good husband, he's a good father, and that wasn't the case. Do you know how wicked it is to try to force someone to stay married to you so that they can use you to justify cheating with other women? But I was wrong when I say he was a narcissist. I'm gonna force you or manipulate you into staying married to me so that I can use your image to create an image for me that will facilitate more opportunities for infidelity. These women were attracted to Martel. Arion was attracted to Martel because she thought he was a good catch, but she only thought he was a good catch because he was married to Melody. And that's one of the reasons why Martel is so furious with Melody. He felt entitled to use her to make him look like a good man so that he could justify abusing her. So anyway, Melody was talking to her brother Marcus about the situation and she said that she filed the paperwork months before they arrested him. She didn't know that he was going to get arrested in front of the children, which was not her intention. Side note, I'm happy that Melody went back to her short blonde pixie cut she looks so light and fresh with that haircut i think shorter hair suits her better because she has a small head and a very pretty face so yeah in the next scene destiny is back and i'm honestly happy to see that she's back on the show i think she left or she was let go of because of her lack of transparency about her life and her marriage situation she's had a lot of challenges over the past several years, I think Destiny the Taurus, um, while Saturn was in transiting through Aquarius, a lot of Taurians had a hard time. Destiny got married and divorced. She lost her home, her businesses, her friends. She became a single mother. Like, she's been through a whole lot. So Destiny is telling Tisha that one of the former producers of the show, Sunny Minx, got married to her ex-boyfriend. She said they were friends for 15 years, longer than Destiny and Melody were friends. Um, and she thought that the guys she married, they were cousins. She thought that her ex-boyfriend and her best friend were cousins, which is dirty work. Minx didn't tell Destiny that she was plotting on her man behind her back until the relationship was solidified. Destiny said she confided in Sunny about her relationship and, and the whole time they were seeing each other by her back. The reason Sunny didn't check in with Destiny from the beginning is because she didn't want to feel guilty about stabbing her friend in the back and she didn't want Destiny to tell her, no, you cannot see my ex. Unfortunately, a lot of older women get desperate for marriage and they're happily ever after. So they get more ruthless as they age, looking at every single man as a potential husband, regardless of who he's attached to or how messy the situation is. If he ain't married, he's fair game. And even if he is married, it's still fair game. And some of these women use their friends to get access to men. I read somewhere that Destiny's ex met the producer, Sonny, on the set of the show. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but almost any man who was willing to sleep with and marry his ex-girlfriend's best friend, I think he's up to no good. The guy is very attractive, so why is he involved in this type of mess? I'm sure he has other options. 
Why is he open to getting married to his ex-girlfriend's best friend? I think like many modern men, um, this guy's looking for the soft life. And I think he may be a social climber. I don't know if he's like Candy's husband, Todd. That would be a positive side to this. I'm not sure. I think Todd does love Candy, but I always side eye older, attractive men who kind of rush to settle down or they get set they settle down in messy situations. This guy has had other options. He has better options than his ex-girlfriend's best friend. Destiny and Sunny look like they can be sisters. So this guy has a type. But Sunny didn't want her friendship with Destiny to get in the way of her fairy tale happily ever after ending. Many women are loyal to the idea of the fairy tale fantasy of being rescued by a man than they are to their friends, their girlfriends. And that's why a lot of this girl power BS is fake. In the presence of an attractive, intelligent, put together man, a lot of these desperate older women will fold like origami. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but for me, it's a huge red flag if a man has no problem sleeping with his girlfriend's friends or anybody in her circle. It's weird. If I remember correctly, I think that Melody alluded to the fact that Martel tried to approach or uh, sleep with some of her friends while they were married. And I did read somewhere on a blog that men, some men size up their girlfriend's friends to see if any of them are cute enough to sleep with on a down low. They said they prefer to date women who have attractive friends for the fantasy of a potential sneaky link situation. Now, Destiny has gotten married um, and divorced and had a baby with Liberic since she broke up with this guy. So I don't know. Was it sense? I don't know. But I don't think she's upset about, um, I don't think she wants the guy back. I just think that she feels betrayed and like perhaps her relationship with him was sabotaged because of Sunny's plot schemes and machinations. So yeah, I do feel bad for Destiny in this situation and I'm happy that she's back on the show because I remember how close she and Melody once were. That was my first impression of her, how much she and Melody doted on each other in a way. However, the little Negro birdie in my brain aka my intuition, is questioning if there was a possibility that Destiny and Martell were flirtatious at some level, which would embolden someone like Sunny if they were closer than she and Melody were. Now, let me throw this out there as a hypothetical. I'm not saying that this actually happens. Please do not run with this and create a whole new storyline. I'm not doing that. I'm just thinking out loud. Suppose there was some way for Melody to spy on Martell through his phone. And suppose she saw inappropriate messages between Destiny and Martell. Would she be in a position to say anything about this without exposing the fact that she was spying on him in the first place? There were a couple of scenes between Destiny and Martell over the past several seasons that made the little Negro birdie with the afro chirp in my head. Um, I didn't want to get too much into it because I didn't want certain people to run with whatever I was intuiting and turn into something that it was not. I could be wrong. I could, I could just be suspicious or whatever, paranoid. But are Sunny and Destiny more alike than they're different? This kind of reminds me of, this, of the Lisa Ray situation. Lisa Ray was basically implying that it's okay to sleep with other women's husbands if you don't know them as friends. She didn't really have a problem with um, Nicole Murphy cheating with a married man. She was upset that she was cheating with a married man of someone in their circle. So it kind of sort of reminds me of that potential dynamic. Are Sunny and Destiny more like they're, they're different? Besides desperation, there may be another reason that Sunny was comfortable poaching Destiny's ex. And as the saying goes, there is no honor among thieves. Martel is a type of miscreant that would stick his penis in any pretty woman, like most narcissists. All they care about is attention and pleasure. Morality be damned. If the Negro birdie in my head is wrong, I hope the audience extends some grace to Destiny because she's been through a lot and I'm happy that she has the opportunity to use this money from the show to rebuild her life. Final note, Kiki's gone. Apparently she was the one spilling the tea about the cast. And this is one of the reasons why I advise Melody to stay away from Kiki, who seems to be very messy and bitter. I was attacked for saying that Kiki was wrong for attacking Tisha. But because some of the stands in the audience see Kiki as Tisha's nemesis, um, it automatically means that everything she does is right. So let me stop before I get flashbacks about the nonsense from the sad past seasons because I don't want to go back and forth with some people about their subjective feelings about the show. Um, but yeah, back to Destiny and what's the name really quickly. This is a really interesting storyline. Um, I wonder how Destiny feels watching, would feel watching her ex-boyfriend and his wife on TV. This is kind of like what people wanted for Ariana Martell. Like that's kind of cruel. But Destiny needs the money 
It's a good opportunity. She's already been with somebody else. Teacher said destiny and suddenly need to talk. I'm like, talk about what? What is it to talk about? Like, it's already over. <laughs> what is it to say? Seriously, there's nothing to say. I don't like you anymore. I don't trust you. I don't F with you. Like, it is what it is. Let it, let sleeping dogs lie. But because we're on a reality TV show, everybody has to talk about everything. Let's talk it out. I wouldn't talk to Sunny ever again, personally. Not because I'm bitter or angry, but because for what? We're not really friends anyway. I honestly believe there's a potential that as a sh as these two people, uh, Sunny and her man, become more popular and the show gets more traction, I wouldn't be surprised if this dude is caught slipping, basically filling himself with his newfound fame and using his newfound fame to get new booty on the side. I would not be surprised if that happens. I'm not saying that Sunny's unattractive. She's very pretty. But this guy is also very attractive. And I might say he can do better than Sunny, like as if it's his competition. I'm saying that he has many options with or without the show. Just like Martel had many options with or without the show, regardless of how ridiculous he is. This guy here, he's not a slouch neither, physically. And so many attractive single men have a lot of desperate women clamoring for them. This guy i think he married he chose uh sunny because of her position as, as a producer on the show and she had the power to get him on the show that's what i honestly believe is sunny the reason why destiny's on the show also uh, maybe that was her consolation like okay i'm sleeping with this lady's ex-boyfriend so let me get her a gig on the show i don't know to be honest but yeah anyway i'm gonna leave it there i look forward to reading your feedback please like share and subscribe and i'll speak to you soon